All right, my friends, we are going to work on some more math. Now, today we're gonna to talk a little bit about division. I never had a chance to teach you the standard algorithm for division. Okay, so I'm gonna to have to teach you on this video, which I don't love. If you want to use a different method to divide, you can, but I do wanna show you the standard algorithm. So, this is what you do. All right, the first thing you do is when you have your division, you cover up all the numbers except the first number. And you ask yourself, can nine fit into seven? Well, the answer is no. So you uncover the next number. Can nine fit into 78? The answer is yes. So now you have to figure out how many nines there are in 78. So I'm gonna think about my nines multiplication. I know that nine times six is 54. I know that nine times seven is 63. I know that nine times eight is 72. Nine times nine is 81, that's above. So I'm gonna to have to go with the 72, which is nine times eight. So right above this eight, because we use the 78, Right above here, I'm going to put eight, okay? Now I'm going to multiply. Nine times eight is 72. Now I'm going to subtract. Eight minus two is six, and seven minus seven is zero. Okay, so I don't need to write that down. Then I'm going to bring down the nine, okay? Now I'm going to go back to division. How many nines are in 69? Well, there. if I did eight, that was 72, that's too much. So what if I did seven? Nine times seven is 63. That's as close as I can get to that without going over. So I'm going to put a seven there and then I'm going to multiply. Nine times seven is 63. I'm going to subtract. Nine minus three is six, and there's nothing, and that's just a zero. Is there anything else to bring down? So this six is my remainder. That's how much is left over. So I have 87 remainder six. All right, let's try the next one. What's the first thing we do? Cover up all the numbers except for the first one. Can six fit into five? Nope. Can six fit into 54? Yes. How many times? Well, we have to think about our multiplication. Six times six is 36. Six times seven is 42. Six times eight is 48. I'm getting closer. Six times nine is 63. Oh, that's too much. Six times eight is 48. It's probably as close as I'm going to get. So I'm going to put an eight up here and then I'm going to multiply. Six times eight is 48. Oh, wait a second. What's six times nine? Six times nine is 54, isn't it? Six, no, it's not. Is it 54? Boys and girls, help me here. What if I put a nine here? What if I put a nine? Six times nine is what? 54. And then if I subtract, I get zero. And then I'm going to bring down the two. Six times nine is 54, yes. Okay, can six fit into two? No, so I'm gonna put a zero here. Six times zero is zero, and I'm gonna subtract and get two. 
So my answer is 90 remainder 2. All right, let's try the next one. Cover up all the numbers except for the first one. Can 5 fit into 4? No. Nope. Can 5 fit into 42? Yes. So 5 times 8 is 40. That's close, so I'm going to put an 8 here. 5 times 8 is 40. Subtract and get 2. Bring down the 9. How many 5s are in 29? There are 5 because 5 times 5 is 25. I'm going to subtract and get 4. But I have another number to bring down. So I'm going to bring down the 3. How many 5s are in 43? Well, there's 8 in 40, so I'm going to put an 8. 5 times 8 is 40. Subtract and get 3. Are there any other numbers to bring down? Nope. So my remainder is 3. All right, we are just going to do those three problems today on that page. Save these for tomorrow. Save those for tomorrow. We're just going to do those first three. And turn now with me to NF3 word problems with addition and subtraction and fractions. And F3, word problems. All right, so the directions say for each word problem, write an equation and or draw a picture or model, then solve. All right, so number one, Daisy has read one-eighth of the books in her classroom library. If she reads another one-eighth of the books in the first month of school, what fraction of books will she have read? So we're combining what she's read versus and what she's going to read. So my fraction problem is going to look like that. And you can do that. All right, get your answer and label it. All right, number two, Jackson bought oh, brought cookies to school to share with his friends. By recess time, three-fifths of the cookies were left. After recess, another one-fifth of the cookies were eaten. What fracts fraction of the cookies did they have left to enjoy after lunch? So Jackson brought cookies to school to share with his friends. By recess time, three-fifths of the cookies were left. So we have three-fifths that were left. After recess, another one-fifth was eaten. So we had three-fifths by recess eaten. Another one-fifth is going to be eaten. So how many, what's the fraction that's going to be left for after lunch? And you can solve that. All right, number three. Before lunch, Luke put together three-tenths of a puzzle. After lunch, he put together another four-tenths of the puzzle. How much of the puzzle has he completed? So we're adding what he did the first time and what he's doing the next time, and we're gonna add those together. All right, you can do that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy on NF3. All right, turn just to the very next page, NF4. We're going to multiply, multiply. We're gonna multiply. We're gonna multiply fractions by whole numbers. All right, now remember, when we multiply fractions, we have to put the large or the whole number over one. So we have three times one is three, and one times four is four. So our answer is three-fourths. Okay, let's do the same here, over one. Two times one is two, one times three is three, so two times one-third is two-thirds. That's just like adding one-third plus one-third. All right, let's do this one. Four times one is four. 
1 times 5 is 5. And there you have it. So I want you to finish this page. Put the whole number over 1. Multiply the top. Multiply the bottoms. And get your answers. Okay, you're going to finish NF4. All right. Now you're going to go to NF6. NF6, it's just one page away. And we're going to do relating fractions and decimals. Okay, so let's do this first one together. The fraction is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 out of 10. And what would my fraction be? I don't have any whole numbers, and I have 7 tenths. All right, let's look at this one. We have 10, 20, 30, 48 over 100. And my decimal would be 0 0.48. All right, you do these last two problems. All right, next page is angles. Now, most of you probably do not have a protractor at your house. So we're going to do the best we can without a protractor. You're not going to be able to do it exactly, but we're going to be able to do okay. So we're going to identify these types of triangles, acute, right, or obtuse. And then down here it says to use a protractor to draw and label each type of angle. We're not going to be able to label it completely, but I'm going to show you how you can do it without a protractor. All right, so what kind of angle is this? It forms a perfect square in the corner. This is a right angle. Okay, this one is big. This is above 90 degrees. So if it's bigger than 90, it is obtuse. And this is smaller than 90. 90 would be there, so this is smaller than 90. So this is acute. So down here where it says to draw an angle that is acute, I'm just going to make sure that my angle is smaller than 90. Okay. I don't have a protractor to actually draw or measure that. You probably don't either. If you had a protractor, I would want you to put how big this is, like 20 degrees. But if you don't have a protractor, that's okay. Just go ahead and draw it. And then you're going to draw a right angle. Draw it as straight as you can. And then you're going to draw an obtuse angle and make sure that it is above or larger than 90 degrees. All right, my friends. That is all for today's math. Nice job. We are almost done with this packet. Tomorrow we will basically be finishing. There might be a page or two that we don't hit on, um, but you guys are doing great. All right, math review. Have fun. Bye.